Hey, 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 everyone! Surreal Canine here with more Disgaea Dimension 2. In the last episode, we learned a little bit about lifting and throwing and unlocked the data shop. And uh, I'm recording this the same day as the last episode, so if you guys are submitting a request for generic units, I have not heard them yet. I apologize. But I just noticed that the help menu has been unlocked. So, uh,. Let's see here. Basic knowledge? No. Master and apprentice? Yeah, yeah. I, I already knew this, Aetna. The master gains 10% of the stats of the apprentice. There's a limit to how much of the bonus the master can get. It also helps their likability increase faster. When her likability decreases, it goes down even more than usual. Uh, huh. Alright, we can't actually see the uh, thing I thought we would be seeing. So yeah, you get 5% extra stats from a weapon uh, per level of weapon mastery. I believe it goes all the way up to 255. That being said, I already uh, gave a talk to everybody. You want to keep talking to your friends after the battle to uh, raise your likability with them. Anyway, let's talk to... Me yeah, I did. That, uh, did that too. You can also turn on autosave in the options, but uh, I don't really want to do that in case uh, the video gets corrupted or something. You never know, right? Geo effects. There are panels that have been imbued with spiritual powers that help make up the netherworld. These are geo symbols. Geo symbols have an effect on every geo panel that matches the color of the panel it's on. So, in this case, the red region has an enemy boost plus 50% effect. When enemies are on these red panels, their stats, such as attack and defense, increase by 50%. <laughs> yeah. This is being caused... Not by that symbol. Not by that symbol either, but by the green symbol that is on it. You can do a couple of things about annoying Geo effects. Uh, First of all, you can uh, take the symbol off of the panels, just to remove the effect across the entire thing. You can lure enemies off of the disadvantages panels. You can also smash the Geo symbol that's sitting, that's uh, causing the effect. If you destroy a Geo symbol, the entire region changes colors to the color of the symbol. That uh, that clear geo symbol over there is a null geo symbol. It completely destroys the geo panel. If you can destroy every geo panel in the map, you will uh, do a little. You'll do a little bit of damage to everybody, in addition to the damage normally caused by a geo chain, as shown here. If a geo symbol gets caught in a geo chain. It'll do get completely destroyed as well and set off its own geo chain. The color doesn't change, the geo symbol just gets destroyed.
We will start by destroying that red symbol. As Etna is uh, so quick to demonstrate for us. If you hold R2, by the way, you can uh, speed up the geo. If, uh, you can speed up the geo chain animation. That is the animation that tells you that you uh, completed the uh, geo chain. If you use color change and null symbols, you can greatly boost the bonus gauge. The bonus gauge lets you get bonus items after you clear the map. Of course, I'm an old pro at setting up Geo Chains, so uh, this is old news for me. I've been playing this guy for years. All right, first of all, Here I come. Yeah. you're going to start. There. I will beat you down. By uh, by throwing the red and green Geo symbols onto the blue area. Now, if we smash the green symbol, the blue will turn green, the red will get caught, the green... Wait, let me think here. Yes. The red will get caught, the green will turn red, the null will be caught, and all of the red panels will be destroyed. Thus, uh, smashing everything in one action. Unfortunately, we can't do it with the uh, Flan's thing here, so uh, let's just heal the Harl for the heck of it. Your, uh, your thing didn't take effect there, Flan. By the way, casting healing spells also gives experience to the caster. So, uh, no reason to fear for Flan's health if you've just got her on a uh, healing mode. Also, whoops, there goes Flan. Etna gain enough experience to level up. All right, Laharl, you are getting caught in the crossfire. Let's go. As you can see, the uh, geo change radiates out in a spiral from the original symbol. Boom! That got us a lot of bonuses, which is good. Etna, finish this guy off. Bonk. Etna has gained enough weapon mastery to learn her first spear skill, Impaler Drop. Ooh, you can see that some of these weapons have uh, glowing names. The green glow means that it is a rare weapon. Every item in the game comes in three types. Rare, uh, common, rare, and legendary. Rare and legendary have a uh, slightly higher stats than common, but that is not their only benefit. Well, we, we will so get into right. that when uh when it's time to do the item world. The statue is up and I'm getting hungry, so let's go back to the Overlord's castle. The rudest gargoyle with a hat. My majestic statue has been... I can't allow you to do this, Prince Lahar. The fact that you are the Overlord's son does not grant you permission to erect these statues. Who the hell are you? Have you forgotten? I made a name for myself as an advisor to King Krzyzewskoy. I am the noble demon, Grosso. Grosso! He is a new character to this game, so it's no wonder Laharl forgot. It's a clear-cut case of remember the new guy. Grosso? Hey, Etna, do you remember him? <clears throat> I don't know. King Krzyzewski had a lot of vassals. I can't remember every single one of them. Even Etna does not remember. You know that this guy is new. <clears throat> anyway, you, youngster, are not cut out to be overlooked. The ruler of the Netherworld. With that being said, I shall rid the Netherworld of all these eyesores. I hope you understand. What? I'm already the Overlord. You can't talk to me like that. Destroying my statues is a felony. Are you ready to receive your punishment? 
still so full of energy. You haven't changed at all. I'm sorry to say this, but I can't afford to waste any time. You children should just go home. Don't interfere with our business. You missed Laharo. Damn it! Looks like that guy's gonna be a real pain. <gasps> Do you think he's trying to become the Overlord too? If he was, instead of destroying the statue, he would have just fought us. So he has no eyes on the throne himself, but he still doesn't accept our authority. I'm also curious about what he meant by our business. Hmm. I don't know what he's up to, but I won't let him destroy my statues. Quick, after him! So yeah, we have our first antagonist. Ooh, and the Dark Assembly is open. That's great for us. Let's make new characters so I can have more vassals. Invite the Strongest Sisters can now be suggested. Uh, that is DLC, and we are going to uh, get started on the DLC. You know, just out of the blue like that. Let's call the assembly. As you can see, uh, Laharl, Etna, and Flan each start with 50 mana. The Prinnies do not. We can create characters and reincarnate without the approval of the assembly. We can delete a character, but Etna won't let us. Change colors allows you to change the character's palette. Dress like back in the day allows Laharl to wear his DLC costume where he looks like he did back in Disgaea 1. Triple EXP gives triple EXP for the first enemy you defeat. Bonus items please, maxes out the bonus gauge. I need more war funds will never be approved. You should, uh, just let it be. Invite the strongest sisters. Uh, Unfortunately, requires 300 mana, so we won't be getting to it for a while. So, let's just start by creating a new character. I think... We should start... By giving our... I think we should start by giving... Flan the ability to uh, cast magic. We're going to start, therefore, with a Red Skull. Choose the capability. The better the capability, the more bonuses the character will get. No way! I'm going with Average! Mana, by the way, is a resource gained when you kill enemies. It's as simple as that. So, we're going to make an average red skull. I think, uh... I think I will name this guy myself. And I will name him... Hmm, what should I name? Well, let's just go with the first thing that popped into my head. Eric. Now we divide up the bonus points. These are all going into int. These bonus points affect how our unit uh, will level up. Next, since we have a magician here, and magicians and witches are a little different than they were in the past four to Sky games, we get to pick his element forte. This option is skipped for monsters. Uh, if we were making a physical unit, we could pick their weapon forte instead. This is the element they will learn spells for. Why not make a wind type uh, magician? 
Next, check the character's personality. Their personality will determine which ability they get. The personality can make or break a character, so choose wisely. Here we have the hardworking Red Skull, which increases special skill power by 30%, but uses 50% more SP. Hesitant Red Skull, special skill power increased by 40%, but SP drains 10% each turn. Tactician Red Skull, when SP is under 50%, special skill power increased by 50%. I think I'll go with the hardworking Red Skull. The personality also changes the voice clips he uses in battle. Lastly, choose the color. Let's see... I think we'll just use the Red Skull color. Now you're ready to make a character. As you can see, he's got a, about equal aptitudes in staves and books. We are going to give him a staff. Got a default like ability with everyone else, that's good. Previous life, can't remember. <laughs> Oops. Eric has been created as Laharl's apprentice. We should balance out our units. A healer, magic user, physical damage dealer. So yeah. That is the Dark Assembly. Etna and Flan can also dress like back in the day. Actually, come to think of it... Okay. Representatives list, by the way, is a list of the, uh... Is the uh, list of the Dark Assembly representatives who have shown up in past builds. You can see how much they like you and uh, what kinds of items they favor, I think. But we have not passed any bills yet, so we are just going to uh, disregard it. Have you ever moved on to an ally unit? If that character is a humanoid, they will automatically lift the character that moved. If that character is a monster, the, count the character who moved will automatically mount the monster. Kind of like a shortcut that might come in handy someday. Good to know. Let's heal and uh, move on to the character. Ooh, we can get a prize. No, we can't. I was wrong. Okay, let's move on to the character demo. Our unit of the day is Flan. Everyone's favorite love freak. As you can see, uh, in my other file, I've been uh, working on Flan quite a bit here. Let's take a look at her status. Uh, she's got great staff affinity. So uh, definitely give her a staff, <laughs> I would say. I think that S rank is actually natural. Uh, you can see her aptitudes there. Uh, Rez, still the highest. She definitely makes a good healer, but I am going to be teaching her some spells as well, so she can use her magic for attacking as well as uh, healing. Her ability is Heart of Affection. Increased stats by 10% while using healing magic to heal units to max HP. Uh, I don't. I still don't know whether that's her or the enemy. <laughs> anyway, you can see she only has three. Uh, Three uniques right now. That's because the uh, her fourth special uh, requires uh, some circumstances. I didn't want to show off this early in the series. Uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. We will return to Flan when the uh, appropriate time comes. But for now, love Knuckle. They're all based on int. <laughs> Holy arrows.
that heart spray has gotten a lot of mileage throughout the series. <laughs> oh, um, okay, Flan, sure. Yeah, as you can see, uh, counterattacks with a staff are no joke, at least in this game. Finally, Flanzilla, which you can see is B level. <coughs> Has such a silly sprite. Apparently, the kaiju suit gives her eye lasers. That's pretty sweet. Flan, keep being awesome. Particles. You know, and so on. That's Flan, and that is why we love her.